What up? Welcome to another episode. Today we're talking about hyperchange in the fashion industry and specifically a company called Bonobos. Founded about 10 years ago, Bonobos was a pioneer of this wave of direct to consumer startups built purely over the internet. The company targets young millennial consumers, mostly men, in urban areas and sells them, you know, sort of premium workwear, luxury wear, outerwear. And Bonobos' story took a crazy plot twist about a year ago when the company was acquired by Walmart, which was pretty unexpected. And now they're rolled into Walmart's broader e-commerce umbrella and have been operating for about a year under this Walmart situation ever since. And despite what you think, you know, Walmart's consumers are so different. The entire ethos of Walmart's customer, where their stores are based, super bargain basement prices is totally different from Bonobos's customer, Bonobos's brand, which is somewhat aspirational. Yet, I be- it seems that Bonobos is doing better than ever. Uh, it keeps expanding. And a couple of my friends are actually customers of the brand and love it. So I thought it'd be a great episode to, to give you first a flavor of Bonobos. Um, I'm going to sh- play some footage now of going inside the store with Hyperchange Advisor Julian, who is also a huge Bonobos fan and customer, and give you a little bit more flavor of this company. And then we'll talk about why Walmart bought it and its overall uh, e-commerce strategy. So basically, like, this is all the items they have. And then um, you can just, like, you try on all the sizes, and then you just order online and it comes to your house. So they don't have any inventory? Yeah. I've been a Bonobo's customer in the, the past six What's months. I started buying yeah. some things there. I just really liked it, how they have like the retail location, but it's really, like you still get the products you know, delivered to your door. So the retail is just kind of to show you everything that they have, you can know, touch the fabrics, feel them. But most importantly, you find your fit. They sell all of their pants in like four different fits. Each style of pant, like whether it's a chinos or a jeans, you can get in that fit and your size. So how do you feel about Walmart being your fashion brand? <sighs> you know, it, it's, uh, I don't love it. Cause I don't support Walmart just in general. I don't think they have the greatest practices and in terms of sustainability I don't really see them doing a lot of corporate social responsibility the issues with pay like if you compare them to a Costco the Costco's average pay is much higher and I think minimum wage is much higher than what you get like if you're an associate at Costco versus an associate at but um, you're still sales shopping associate. there I guess yeah <laughs> You know, it's kind of unfortunate. Being time with the rant about Walmart, <laughs> yet still spends all its money there. That has like no, nothing to do with Walmart when you walk in. You can't yeah. tell. You it's can't totally. tell. Completely different website. I don't even think that they actually, like if you go to their website, I'm not sure if it even says anything like, you know, corporate family of Walmart or whatever. <laughs> I had a jacket with, um, some wear and tear. Honestly, I don't know what happened. I, I wore it um, two times. On the second time that I wore it, um, when I took it off, there is like, it looks like some rips by the armpit. It's been about 40 days, only wore it two times, so I was hoping I could just walk into the store, get an exchange. It was really easy. 
no questions asked. A replacement for that in the mail in like a couple days. <sighs> Dope. All in all, like I would say best um, apparel shopping experience I've had in the past like couple years. Just Damn. like I, I just really like their model. I think it's actually very similar to like a Warby Parker model where they have some storefronts you go in you can try on their glasses at the store if you want. You're wearing Warby's. We gotta yeah. make a Warby video. I'm wearing Next. Warby's right now. I think Galley's wearing about to Warby's go to the Warby's. too. Uh, the way that I would describe it is like, if I go to like a Nordstrom's or a Macy's or something like that, to me, it's like a very stressful experience. Like there's so many options and it's just like tough. Like this Bonobo storefront, very small, right? Because they don't have inventory. So they just have smart. like they just have like one item that they carry, and then in the back they have you know the different fits so that you could try those on in the store. But it's small and efficient. You know, you walk in, someone greets you, they're there to help you, and you don't have like that overwhelming experience of just like being lost in a massive department store, like a million different options. So it's just a totally different model from traditional brick and mortar retail. Additionally, what's another tidbit that I found so fascinating about Bonobos is unlike a traditional store like Macy's or, you know, J. Crew, where you go to one rack and they have all the same pants, but like 20 different sizes of the same pant on that rack, Bonobos has a rack with all different styles of pants. So this means there's less space, it's easier to look at different stuff, um, and they're paying less, you know, retail costs. It's just a, you know, internet first way to do uh, retail. So Walmart is making a large push to acquire a bunch of different little e-commerce brands sort of like bonobos to be able to compete with amazon and what i think is really smart about what walmart is doing is they're not associated they're not rebranding everything as walmart they're not tying it into the same brand they're actually letting them operate independently and i think this does wonders for the bonobos brand and even though someone like julian may know that they're owned by walmart he doesn't care because they're operated independently there's still that bonobos vibe you don't get feel like you're shopping at walmart when you go to bonobos it's it's a totally different and separated experience and that actually has huge benefits from a branding standpoint. Here's a chart of Walmart's e-commerce revenue for the past four years. Fiscal 19 and fiscal 2020 are projected. I sort of pieced these together from articles I could find. But as you can see, this is a rapidly growing slice of uh, Walmart's business that they are trying to compete with Amazon on. And what's interesting is they're attacking this in a bunch of different ways. If you remember, in 2016, Amazon bought Jet.com for about $3 billion. It was a huge purchase that received a ton of scrutiny. But the reason they did it was really just an aqua hire of Mark Lore. Now, if we dig a little deeper in the past, Mark Lore was the founder of diapers.com, which had a famous, you know, uh, spat and basically battle with Amazon back in the day when a Amazon wanted to start selling diapers or partner with diapers.com or sell to them. Diapers.com wouldn't sell to Amazon. So then Jeff Bezos was like, screw it. We're going to sell, undercut you and sell diapers and bleed money every single day. And because we're Amazon, we can stay underwater longer. Diapers.com eventually saw their value plummet. They were going to go out of business and then they had to fire sale to Amazon. So Mark Lore has a long history of being a pioneer in e-commerce, of fighting Amazon, and that's who Walmart wanted, and that's why they bought Jet.com, and now they position Mark Lore as the leader of their new e-commerce initiative. Tying this back to Bonobos, Andy Dunn, who is the founder and chief executive of Bonobos, now has gone on to, you know, one of the reasons that he said that he want, wanted to get acquired by Walmart was he got pitched by Mark Lore and wanted to help build this portfolio of e-commerce brands. Now, uh, Dunn actually doesn't even work for Bonobos anymore. Technically, he is the SVP of c digital consumer brands at Walmart. Bonobos, although Although they were originally an e-commerce brand, it's interesting that they've started to morph with what they're calling guide shops, which are essentially the stores that I showed you in the video where me and Julian went, which where they have all the clothes on display and you can order them super easily, talk to a representative, help try on your fit, figure out what fit is good for you, um, but they still have no inventory and everything, you know, the actual purchase is done through the platform online and then it's shipped to you. So it's still sort of an e-commerce sale, but these guide shops, which they now have about 58 of that are open um, based on me just counting from their website, one more coming soon. So they are gen growing a pretty, you know, sizable uh, store footprint just for Bonobos. And in terms of financials, I did some Googling just because I was curious. Um, according to this article I found from Recode in 2017, uh, before the acquisition, Bonobos was projected to hit about 150 million in revenue for the year, was growing about 30%. Um, they'd also raised about 128 million up until that point in venture funding. And so Bonobos was bought out for just over two times sales or current sales, it sounds like with a 30% growth rate, which actually 
actually seems like kind of a steal um, given the fact that it seems like Walmart's been able to continue that growth rate. My guess is now Bonobos is probably doing 200, 200 million plus annually in revenue and continues to scale. And so I just think this is, you know, a really interesting company to watch for a couple reasons. First, because they're owned by Walmart. Second, because they're doing this no inventory, streamlined retail, hybrid internet approach, which is clearly the future, way more efficient than traditional legacy brands like Macy's, J. Crew, who Bonobos, and now Walmart is putting out a business. I love what Walmart's doing here by operating these startups independently, um, doing it the right way, acquiring them, getting the founders to stay on. They're keeping the talent. So Walmart is doing a lot right here, and it's a different strategy than Amazon, who is buying things and then just rolling them all under their Amazon umbrella. I think, you know, consumers, especially in fashion, you know, you want to feel different. You want to feel unique. Um, you don't want to get tied into a huge brand like Amazon or Walmart. You want something that, you know, is, is has more of a unique sort of swag or identity. And I think Bonobos has really captured that with their products, and that's why they're so successful. And so I think it's, you know, interesting to see them continue to grow, to see my friends who would never shop at Walmart in their lives love Bonobos and spend, you know, a ton of money there to pretty much get their entire wardrobe for work and for going out. So they're doing something right. Walmart is winning here. This is hyper change in the fashion industry. Who would have thought Walmart would be going to high-end urban millennial menswear, but they're doing it and they're doing it successfully. Stealth Trojan horse by the name of Bonobos. This is hyper change. Thank you for watching. Please let me know if you have a comment, questions, anything about Bonobos, leave it below. Also a huge shout out to our Patreon producers, supporters on Patreon. It means a ton. Definitely check out our Patreon page. Also hyper change merch. I'm plugging it. It's only available for a couple more days. Make sure to get it. Once it's gone, it's never gonna be printed again. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.